Hey girl, hey! How are you ladies doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to my channel. If you are new, hi beautiful, I am Kadrian Carol. It is so nice to have you. If you are returning, welcome back for a very, very righteous, Holy Spirit-led girl chat. Okay girls, I am so ecstatic to go over this topic. Ladies, if you are struggling, okay? You're out here in these dating streets and you're struggling with keeping it closed, <laughs> keeping the doors <laughs> shut, staying pure, staying righteous, staying holy, or you've been dealing with Mr. Prince Charming, you're supposed to be Boaz, and you feel a bit pressured into engaging into extracurricular activity, girls, this is the video for you. This is a video to save Rewatch when you're going through some challenges. So I want to go over the questions you should be asking yourself if you are struggling with staying abstinent until marriage. Okay, girls? Yes, ma'am. If you have not already, please do subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notification bell. We are over here sitting pretty, getting paid, and living a privileged lifestyle through Christ. We are in our Bibles and we're in our bags too. We would love for you to join our community. We are currently going into a prayer watch and a fast over there in the Patreon. We do our Bible study glam chats every Monday and we do our Bible calls and uncut baby we go over everything everything that the enemy is trying to deceive the world with that's giving very much satan we are pointing it out we are exposing the enemy we are talking about all of the things we are seeking deliverance we are staying getting in agreement when it comes to our freedom when it comes to our walks with christ we're putting our relationship with christ as a priority and we are striving to become the women that y'all has called us to be the daughters of the most high so we would love to have you over there and the patreon the link is down below so let's get into this girl chat titled a godly dating and i really 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 like him we're talking about marriage and i don't think i can wait he says it's gonna be okay and this is totally normal what should I do? Okay, sis, I hear you. We have all been there. It is very common a strategy that the enemy uses to have you backslide, to get access to you when it comes to the desires of your flesh and lust and all of the things. So prior to proceeding, pause, stop, take a deep breath. We are here for you girls, I will definitely be praying for this video before I post it for any of the ladies that are currently struggling with sexual immorality or getting out of fornication or staying out of fornication or being pressured by someone that they feel like truly may be the one. So the first question you should ask yourself, sis, is, is it worth it? Yes, I understand that you like him a lot. Yes, I understand that y'all are discussing marriage. Yes, I do understand that he's pretty quick with it when it comes to the reasons why he feels like it's important for you guys to connect on that level because he truly is passionate about making the relationship work and he's passionate about you know not losing you and you know making sure this is the right decision for the both of you guys so he just wants to try it out. Sis, is it really worth it? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, it states, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of Yah? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the rivalers, nor the swindlers will inherit the kingdom of the Most High Elohim, Yahweh. It's like it's right there. One of the top, 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 top sins, which they're all equivalent. There's no sin worse than the other. And engaging into any of these sins and choosing to continue in any of these sins will lead you to a fiery end and separate you from Yah. But one of the first ones is sexual immorality. It says, is it worth losing your inheritance? Now, pause, stop. Let's, let's, let's look into it. 
What is the definition of inheritance? So it reads, to inherit means to receive an irrevocable gift with an emphasis on the special relationship between the benefactor and the recipients. Unlike legal inheritance, the benefactor, Yahweh, does not die, yet he provides material and spiritual blessings for his people. So, let's revisit. Is it worth losing your inheritance, daughter of the Most High, to test trial, to test run extracurricular activity with this guy? Is he really who y'all sent for you to be pressuring you into sin? We do not serve a God that is a man that he should have to lie. Our God's word never returns back void. And with that being said, it says right here, you will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High over how many minutes yeah it's not worth it second thing i want you to ask yourself if this man is truly not disciplined enough to hold himself back from defiling you in this manner is this truly the man that you want to be your husband and this is the same thing with men it's truly the woman that you want to be your wife She's encouraging you. She's trying to seduce you. She's trying to position and put you into a place where you are being tempted or you feel pressured into or you feel like you might lose this person because they're not willing to wait. If they don't have discipline to wait until marriage, then once they marry you, they won't have discipline enough to stay faithful to you. The spirit that they're operating in is lust. And with lust, it is something that cannot be satisfied. And when he has that legal right, he has that access to having you whenever he wants you, how much ever he wants you, because you're his wife, it's going to become undesirable to him. That lust is not going to be satisfied when it comes to you. That lust is going to crave something that he doesn't have easy access to. That lust is going to crave someone that he's going to have to sneak around with because the adrenaline rush and the excitement of being sneaky or doing unlawful things. That's why it's so exciting to him because you're untouchable now. If he is not disciplined enough and he doesn't value you enough to stay pure with you, then he is not your husband. And once he becomes your husband, if you decide to reject any of these warning signs, you are going to be struggling with a bigger battle. Proverbs chapter 27, verses 20 states, Hell and destruction are never full. So the lust of men are never satisfied. So that means that the more that you feed into your fleshly desires and the things that you want to do and do as thy wilt, do as you want to do, do as the world does, do what feels good, do what looks good, do what everybody else is doing, it's going to always grow into a bigger, more destructive monster. And the unavoidable end is hell. The next thing I want you to ask yourself, this is a question number three. If he loves you, truly loves you, but more importantly, if he loves Yah and he submitted to the Most High Elohim, he submitted to Yahweh, which he should be, if he is even being considered for the position as your partner, your helpmate, someone that you will spend the rest of your life with, why is he submitting a problem to you that you cannot fix but in reality it could potentially lead you astray and have you backsliding versus him exercising the relationship that he should have with our father if you're struggling with that by all means this is not something that you should just try to hide or avoid or ignore or, or act as if you know um it's not like a real thing you should be submitting it to your father and as the man who will be the head of your household, that will be the covering, if he is not able to submit his challenges, his frustrations, his disappointments, his weaknesses to our father, the only one who can give him an answer, the only one who can deliver him, the only one who can intercede, the only one that can pour into him and refill his cup, then 
he really isn't the man of God that he's saying he is. When we are struggling with our fleshly desires, um, sexual immorality, obedience, or oppression, we are to seek ye first the kingdom. We're supposed to seek the kingdom first. We're supposed to submit our everything to Yah. We're supposed to pray. We're supposed to pray without ceasing. We're supposed to fast. We are supposed to totally surrender. Surrender it all. Until we hear an answer. It might not be an answer that we like. It might not be the answer we were hoping for. It might have not even been the second runner up. But our father will answer. He is the only one that can deliver us. He is the only one that can heal us. If he is not submitting, yes, it's okay for him to come to you and say, hey, I'm really struggling, you know, with my flesh. I'm desiring to do X, Y, and Z. Sis, pray for that man. Look up Bible scriptures for him. Say, this is what you need to do. You need to pray and fast. If he is not willing to pray and fast and get delivered from this spirit of lust prior to y'all stepping into the covenant of a marriage, this is not your husband. So ask yourself, if he's truly the man at the most high that he's saying that he is, why is he not seeking the father when it comes to this challenge? Challenge after challenge after challenge, the enemy is going to throw things at you. And it's up to you as to how you're going to navigate the situation. Are you going to fall into it and think that you can just apologize and, you know, try to stay out of it? No, we are weak. We are flesh. We will never be enough if we are not seeking the Holy Spirit and asking to be renewed and refreshed and strengthened every day by the power that raised Jesus from the grave, which is the Ruha Quadesh, the Holy Spirit, then every time we're going to fall. So if he's not asking you to pray for him in this situation, if he isn't seeking the father in this situation to get delivered, if he is trying to actually engage into it and take you with him, this man is not your husband. This woman is not your wife. So the last thing I want you to take note of, know that any man that is trying to have you engage into any kind of sin is not sent by our father. Our God will not trick us. He will not lie to us. He will not scam us. He will not tempt us. He will tell us what he expects from us. He will tell us the truth. He will tell us this is what's going to happen if you abide by what I say. You follow and honor my laws. If you love me in spirit and in truth. This is what's going to happen if you do not. And because he loves us, he's given us a choice. And not only did he give us a choice, it's not like a blind door number one. What's behind door number one? What's behind door number two? The option's yours. Pick one. He's saying option one is my way. Because I am the creator and I made you, I know what's best for you. I know what you need. I know what you don't need. I know what you were called to. I know what you weren't called to. I know what I created you for. I know what I instilled into you. I know the seeds that I planted into you. I know the purpose I have for you. I know the plans that I have for you and their plans to prosper you and not to hurt you, to give you a future and to give you a hope. So he's saying choose life and he is life. But if you choose death and death is anything outside of his will, anything outside of his word, anything outside of what he said or he's called for us to do. Then this is the consequence. How gracious of a God to be so kind and generous to let us know that I love you. I have what's best in store, anything that your heart desires. If you're aligned with my will, your heart will desire and crave the things that I have for you. And it's more than you can ever ask or imagine. But if you choose to go and be your own God, and to be an idolater and idolize that man, idolize marriage, idolize money, idolize the aesthetic, idolize a look, idolize a platform, idolize people and how they see you. A position, a title, a leadership, an influence. If you are looking to be anything before God, it is an idol. 
So if you are desiring to just give this man what he wants, we're talking about getting married. Just know that you chose death. Just know that that is a counterfeit sent from the enemy to rob you of your inheritance, to steal, kill, and destroy. That is what the enemy is here to do, to steal, kill, and destroy, to kill your purpose, to, ki to block your blessings, to steal your inheritance. If this man, being a counterfeit, is just so wonderful, imagine the true authentic man that y'all created for you. Okay, so don't forget that in this season of singleness, we should rejoice for what our father has for us. We should be in our purpose. We should seek him for strength to avoid the traps and the lies and deception of the enemy. We should desire, Father, what you have for me, let it be. And what's not for me, remove it from my life. If that man is giving you an ultimatum and he's trying to make it seem as if it's your fault and you will miss out on everything that he has for you, then know that what he has for you is death. Romans 6.23 states, the wages of sin is death, and that is all that man can offer you. So sis, back to the question I chose you to ask yourself, is it worth it? If this is the man, if this is your Boaz, if this is your rib cage, and you are his rib, and y'all created y'all for one another, then he will honor our father. He will honor y'all's laws. He will lift you up when you're falling short. He will pray with you. He will pray for you. He will want the best for you. He will value and cherish this y'all given covenant that y'all has blessed you guys with, blessed us with. And he's not going to allow anything to give the enemy access to destroying what y'all has for you guys. This man will struggle spiritually when it comes to waiting on y'all, when it comes to making a business deal, when it comes to a, a serious family decision, when it comes to how to navigate something, when other challenges that are thrown within life come at you and your household because he doesn't have that discipline to refrain from caving in, giving up, submitting to the situation versus submitting to Yah and understanding that greater is he that's within us than he that's of the world and that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then that means that he is a weak man and spiritually, you, your children, your family, your household will be a punching bag for the enemy. Intimacy is important when you become one, okay? Until then, that should not be the focus. The focus should be having Yah at the center of the foundation of y'all's relationship, of your life, of your future and getting delivered prior to entering a new season, a yah given covenant. Nations chapter 6 verses 9 states, And let us not grow weary of doing good things, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So that means do not get tired. One of the fruits of the Spirit is long-suffering, which is a form of discipline. You're going to have to stick through it. You're going to have to trust and believe that Yah's plan will come to pass. You have to believe in the process and Yah's timing. You have to not be moved by what you see or by what you hear, but what you know within your heart and your spirit and what our God has told us to be true. So if he is not able to wait on the Lord, if he's not able to wait on y'all's marriage, if he's not able to seek the kingdom first and submit to our father, he is not it. You are not missing out on anything. And like I mentioned to you, if you are not within your purpose, if you are not within your Bible, you're not within your bag, and you're not doing the things that you have been called to do, 
and you're depending on this man who is flawed, who's struggling himself, then already you're setting your marriage up for destruction. I'll leave you with a couple of more um, Bible um, verses um, about sexual immorality. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 3 through 5. For this is the will of Yah, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know Yah. The next one, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 13. No temptation has ever overtaken you that is not common to man. Yahweh is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. So that means Yahweh is faithful, and he gave you a way out, and you chose death. And whatever comes with death, is what you chose over the blessings and the inheritance that y'all has for us. And the final Bible verse that um, I have for you girls is Ephesians chapter 5, verses 5. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous um, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and the Most High. Christ and the Father. Yeshua HaMashiach and Yahweh. So ladies, if you have not asked Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, to be your Lord and Savior, to be your Messiah, please say this prayer with me. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your one and only begotten Son to pay the wages of my sin. I confess that I am a sinner and deserving of death. I believe Jesus the Messiah is the only one who can save me. I ask you, Jesus, to forgive me and purge me with hyssop to purify my soul. Help me to resist the temptations of the enemy and strengthen me in my weakness to walk in the will of my Father. King Jesus, I ask that you come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you were resurrected and that you are our living God. I believe that there is only one way to Yahweh, our Father, and that is through you. Save me. Transform me. I am yours, and I will choose to live for you for the rest of my life. I decree and declare I have received your payment for my sins, and I will live a new life, a set-apart life that will be everlasting in you. Thank you, King Jesus, for first loving me. Amen. Heaven rejoices every time there is a new soul that is saved from the hands of the enemy. We are so blessed for what y'all has for you. We are so blessed to call you a sister in Christ. We are so blessed to be a part of your journey. And ladies, if you desire to be around a group of women who prioritize their walk with Christ, prioritize being within their purpose, prioritize living set apart, righteous, holy, in their Bible and in their bag too, please do join our Patreon. We would love to have you. Girls, have an amazing week. I love you so much. Y'all loves you so much more. Bye.